Welcome Transglobal employees. I'm your CEO, Sam Upton. I called you here to discuss the future of Transglobal Airlines. Our country is, adapt is changing and our company must adapt. We've enjoyed a monopoly on all domestic routes, but our country will soon be an open economy. Transglobal will be privatized and shares in the company will be distributed to local governments and made available for sale to the public. The competitive change that will occur is that our competition will be offered beyond rights so that they can service passengers from one domestic city to another. I see Transglobal as having two major options. We can either be a major full service carrier or we can be a low cost carrier for our local markets. The time to shape our company is now and I encourage all of you to help determine a strategy for Transglobal success. Hi Claire. Hi Jamie. Hey Jeff. I was able to gather the Transglobal financial data analyze. Were you guys able to get any descriptive information on the airline market? Yes, we've looked through it briefly and we've got a lot to work with. How does the financial data look? Looking over this, I see some errors with their current method for allocating their expenses. I think we should take this data and reallocate the expenses. Then we have a more accurate income statement by each market segment. This sounds great. We should continue analyzing the information and working on our presentation to the CEO. We have the opportunity to be promoted into leadership positions and we come up with a successful strategy. I see three of my younger managers have put together a strategy for the future of Transglobal. Let's hear what they have to say. I've gathered some financial data and reallocated the company's expenses. Last year's income statement allocated the aircraft, fuel, and depreciation costs based upon passenger miles flown in each market. Yes, that's how we've always allocated expenses. Unfortunately, this method does not take into account the significant differences that each plane costs operate. Since the international flights carry the most passengers and fly the furthest distances, they account for 88% of Transglobal's passenger miles flown, and we're getting allocated 88% of Transglobal's operating costs. We gathered data and calculated the actual fuel usage. Then we use straight line depreciation for each plane type to get a more accurate total of the operating costs associated with each market segment. Look at our new allocations of operating expenses by each market segment. The international market segment now has only 63.5% of the operating expenses, but the city and regional routes now are being allocated a higher percentage. The impact on the income statement is significant. Here are the aircraft operating costs for both allocation methods and their variants. With our revised allocations, the international market segment receives almost 40 million Krevna less in fuel expense and almost 9 million Krevna less in depreciation expense. The city and regional routes are now allocated more of the fuel and depreciation expense. It's great analysis. We should have been analyzing the fuel usage per route and plane size to allocate the fuel expense appropriately for each market segment. On last year's income statement, employee expenses and gate charges were allocated based upon the number of passengers served. How did you allocate these expenses? We gathered the data needed to allocate these expenses to the appropriate market segment. We took the salaries for pilots that fly the international routes and allocated them to the international market segment. We did the same for the salaries for the cabin crews and ground staff for each of the market segments. Since the ground staff at three airports services all market segments, we allocated their resources based upon an informal time study that showed how much time they dedicate to each route. Good thinking on breaking out the employee expense based upon the market segment that they serve. We didn't have any data to see the specific market segment our marketing dollars were spent on, so we decided to allocate them based upon each market segment's revenue as a percent of the total revenue. This method spreads Transglobal's marketing expenses 57% to international, 37% to city, and 6% to regional. The general administrative expense was allocated based upon the number of operational employees dedicated to each market segment, because we feel this expense is dependent upon the total number of employees Transglobal has. Sounds like you're really taking your time to understand Transglobal's expenses and allocate them appropriately. The effort that you have put into this expense allocation will give us a more accurate picture of our business and the strategy we should take for the future. I'm excited to see what the revised income statements are for each market segment. Here's our analysis on the profitability of each market segment. The main factor causing difference in last year's income statement with our allocation method is the fuel expense. Last year's income statement showed the international market segment operating at a loss of 32 million Krevna. With our allocations, it's now operating at a profit of 4 million Krevna. The city routes are still the most profitable market segment at almost 35 million Krevna. The regional routes are now operating at a loss of almost 15 million Krevna. I can't believe it. All this time we thought we were operating a loss on the international segment, but it looks as if we can compete internationally. The regional market segment income statement is very disappointing and hard to believe. Can you provide any information on why it's operating at a loss? After we found that the regional market was operating at such a loss, we decided to calculate an income statement for each route to see where we needed to make improvements. An income statement for each route? We've never analyzed our business at that level before. Let me run you through the income statement for the SOF to PLE route to show you what we found. We calculated the route revenue by looking at the annual passenger miles flown for this route out of the maximum passenger miles possible. This route is filled at around 68% annually. With 25 seats on the plane, it averages about 17 passengers per flight. 
This gives us annual revenue of over 1.2 million Krevna. We use the data we collected to calculate the fuel expense for this route, which consists of a fixed price per flight as well as a variable cost per passenger mile. The annual SOF to PLE fuel expense was 856,000 Krevna. Depreciation, salaries, gate rentals, and general administration expenses were allocated by taking the percentage of regional flights for this route out of all of the regional flight routes. There are 32,850 regional one-way flights in a year, and 1,460, or 4.4% of them, service the SOF to PLE route. 4.4% of all of these expenses were allocated to SOF to PLE. Marketing expense was allocated as SOF to PLE's revenue as a percentage of all the regional routes revenue. Wow, once again you've really gotten into detail and thought about how the expenses should be allocated. This gives us a net annual loss of 373,000 Krevna for SOF to PLE. At the current expense allocation, is it even possible for this route to be profitable? We conducted a break-even analysis to determine how many average passengers per flight it would take for this route to be profitable. Fuel expense is the only variable cost since it's the only one that will increase as the passengers increase. All other expenses are fixed. Take a look at this chart. It shows that this route must have an average of 23 passengers, or 92%, for all flights just to break even. The highest flight capacity for any regional route is 84%, and all the regional routes only average 48%. Thank you for this excellent financial report. What were you guys able to come up with for a SWOT analysis? When considering strengths of our company, we can see a strong financial position that will set us up well as we enter a changing market. We will need to change our strategy to remain profitable. However, a history of profitability will make this change significantly easier. Secondly, our strategy of only purchasing planes when government funding was available has left us with almost no debt. This will allow us to use future cash flows to purchase newer equipment and more standard amenities. One other strength is that the international and city flights are both filled close to capacity. All of our international flights have an average capacity of at least 78%, and all of our city flights have an average capacity of at least 90%. With these numbers, we will be able to build on this success with our new strategy. When planes are full, we are able to cover our costs and earn profit. Our safety record is also very strong. With our past positive safety record, we will be able to keep our current customers and gain new ones because people will be confident to fly with us. Our past history of safety is an invaluable strength that our company has earned. Finally, I would like to mention our low cost structure for our city routes. It is evident that city routes are most profitable. With their high average capacity and low cost structure, we are able to cover our costs and earn a higher profit than on some other routes. You all have pointed out some great strengths, but obviously there must be some weaknesses. I agree. The quality of customer service is way below the industry standards. We are known for cancellations, delays, crowded seating, limited beverage service, and no entertainment systems. We will need to correct these things going forward. Secondly, while our no-debt structure has left us in a great financial position, it has also left us with old aircraft and ground facilities. Our long-term strategy will need to remedy this without becoming too much in debt. I can see why this is important to our customers. Also, poor scheduling causes underutilized planes to sit idly at airports for extended periods of time. This should be on our agenda to improve right away. Finally, we are concerned that management and employees have not been exposed to the pressures of a competitive market, making it more difficult to strategize in our new environment. This is sound analysis of our past performance. Why don't we shift our thinking to the future and look at opportunities and threats? First, we are able to attract local customers on international routes because of surcharges by other carriers. Customers will still want to save where they can by purchasing their tickets from us. Another great thing to keep in mind is our brand recognition as the country's only national air travel provider. I like how you're thinking. These could be good things to emphasize as we move forward. It is important to recognize that the shift to capitalist society will most likely provide the economic means to travel to a greater number of individuals. Therefore, the demand for air travel should see a significant increase in the future. Finally, the company can increase its international market through the beyond rights that we will gain. I can see how these governmental changes could be beneficial, but we face significant threats as well. First, we will face competition from other well-established international airlines who will have beyond rights to our domestic destinations. We expect there to be increased competition across all market segments. You're pointing out my exact concerns. I hope you've got some ideas for how to face this competition. Absolutely. We would like to identify threats so we can overcome them. 
In addition, we're concerned about the effect that private investors gaining a controlling interest in the company will have in the decision-making process. Finally, fuel costs are unpredictable and our company has suffered in the past from a spike in oil prices. We would like to set up our cost structure in a way that this does not affect our profitability as much. Overall, we've got great things to work with as we look ahead to the future success of TransGlobal. Now that I've seen your revision to our income statement and heard your SWOT analysis, how do you suggest we use this information to keep TransGlobal Airlines successful? What strategy do you recommend? Our overall strategy is that we become a major full-service carrier. The revisions of the income statement show that these are the routes that will allow us to be the most profitable. We've divided our strategy into a short-term and long-term strategy. Our primary short-term recommendation is to cut the number of regional flights for routes where the flight capacity is less than 65%. This will increase the flight capacity on those routes, which will help reduce the fixed fuel costs. We should also be able to reduce our employee expense since there won't be as many flights to operate. The attached chart will show the routes we recommend reducing. We suggest moving from 45 round-trip flights per day down to 30. Now we want to show you our forecasted income statement after the reduced flights for the regional market segment. While we still see ourselves operating at a loss in this market segment, we are able to reduce expenses and losses without raising the fare, which would have a negative impact on revenue. We anticipate loss reduction by almost 10 million Krevna in one year. We didn't want to completely eliminate routes for fear that it would hurt the brand. Our next main short-term strategy is to increase the fares on Indian National Flight over 2,500 miles one way by 10 Krevna. This next chart will show that while the international market segment as a whole is profitable, there is a large variance in route profitability. The routes with longer distances have a much higher fuel expense, but the fare is the same. The three routes above 2,500 miles are operating at a loss. Increasing the fare by only 10 Krevna on these three routes, we forecast a new annual profitability by route to look like this. The revised international market segment income statement would increase profits from 4.2 million to 10.1 million. At this time, we would suggest leaving the city flights as they are because they are profitable. In this market segment, we will need to keep an eye on our competitors' prices and amenities because of the beyond rights that other carriers will be gaining in our country. These are all excellent points, but they are very immediate. Tell me what you suggest for our strategy into the coming years. Sure, Sam. To be successful in the long term, we will need a marketing strategy. Well, Jamie, what kinds of ideas were you thinking? First, I suggest conducting some market research to determine customer preferences besides fair price. The results should be analyzed based upon international, regional, and city flights, determining if length of flight reflects a difference in customers' needs. Jamie, we have never conducted market research before. What will we do with this research? I propose that we implement a few amenities to keep past customers from switching to new airlines. For example, I suggest offering a food and beverage service during our international flights, since these are our longer flights. Non-alcoholic beverages would be served complimentary, with a few alcoholic beverages offered for an additional fee. The food service would include a complimentary snack with meals available for an additional fee. This service could be expanded for our city and regional flights as well. I do anticipate some initial sunk costs for implementing these amenities. However, over a short period of time, the alcoholic beverage service, meal service, and an anticipated increase in flight capacity will compensate for the costs. I anticipate the benefits of this added service outweighing the costs. Jamie, I like these ideas and I think it will give us a competitive advantage. Let's take the necessary steps to conduct customer surveys and test out the food and beverage service on a few international flights before expanding the service. I agree, Sam. I think the gradual implementation is the most effective way to analyze the benefits from the added amenities. I also want to add an employee training program to improve the friendliness and patience of our flight attendants in addition to training them on the new food and beverage service. These all sound like things that we could easily implement. Is there anything else you would like to mention? With the increased profitability that we predict, there will be an increase in cash flows to finance newer planes. In addition, we should address the beyond rights principle because other countries' airlines can fly into our capital in other cities. We need to take advantage of the respective rights in their cities. This could be accomplished on a gradual basis and determine profitability before expanding. Wow, this is extraordinary information that you have presented to me today. I feel very confident that the company is in good hands moving forward. I will be sending you down to Orlando in the coming weeks to present to corporate.